Hey guys, David Lim, board certified dermatologist. Today's video is not a promotional video, it's educational purposes only. And today we're discussing the differences between what's known as PLLA, which is Sculptra, and that of hyaluronic acid-based fillers or HA fillers. There's a lot of confusion in regards to the fillers in the filler world, and I'll give you the lowdown on what each of these are used for. Now, as you guys know, in the whole world now, everyone has seen a downfall in regards to hyaluronic acid-based fillers or AJ fillers. Stuff like your Juvederm, your Restylane, uh, your Tioxanes, they're usually seeing the downward spiral and downward use, especially by uh, dermatologists and plastic surgeons. But is this validated? Has the world of Sculptra taken over everything? Here's the lowdown on things. Sculptra is not new. It's actually a very old injectable. It's made by Galderma and it's over 20 years old. It's been used initially for HIV lipodystrophy, so it's used as a safe filler to revolumize patients. So, guys, it would start it off as a revolumizing filler many years ago. In those dilutions um, over 20 years ago, the dilutions were much, much less. So, you're looking at one part sculpture to generally three to five mils of saline or basically a mix of um, um, salt water. When that happens, the rate of nodules and side effects went up. So you'll see one company play another company, in other words, something like um, Allergan or Mertz with their um, things like the Harmonica and their um, Radius will always play against Galderma and always recite those old, old journals saying that the increased incidence of nodules, in other words, sculpture nodules or lumps and bumps after sculpture itself. True, it does happen, but when you're looking at dilutions now of one to nine or one to 10 or one to 11, it's extremely rare. And if it does happen, a lot of these nodules are self-limiting. So, Sculptra initially started off 20 years ago as a volumizing agent. And with all the amount of hype, I guess, over the past um, three, four years, on your bio-remodeling, biostimulatory injectables, guess what? They've remodeled that and they've rebranded it to a biostimulator, in other words, something that stimulates collagen, compared to something like hyaluronic acid-based filler, which actually um, does not stimulate collagen per se. So, let's get back to HA fillers. Are they gone? Are they dead? The answer is no, because HA fillers are still needed to replace, for example, bone. So, if you need projection, in other words, if you need an area of your face, of your skin to actually project, in other words, give some dimension, Sculptra cannot, cannot do that. It's a volumizer and it's a tissue tightener per se. So, we still need HA fillers. HA fillers, if they're used properly, if they're used properly and used judiciously and in the right context are still useful. You cannot have a liquid to replace something which has a high G-prime, in other words, something which actually projects. So things like your Resti or Restylane Lift, your Voluma, um, your uh, Tioxane products, which are from something like Ultra Deep, they all have a projection capability, as well as things like Radius if you don't dilute that. So for jawline areas, for example, where you need to highlight, for example, the mandible, the chin, the uh, mid-face area like the cheeks, all of these HA fillers, they are very, very good and they, they have a role of which your bio remodeling agents don't. So if you do need them to project because you're deficient in your deeper structures such as a deep fat pad in your bone, they are still by far the best. Where does Sculptra play in? So Sculptra basically is a liquid water or liquid um, suspension, right? It contains PLLA or poly L lactic acid in a mixture of CMC or something called carboxymethyl cellulose, which is a carrier agent, and that's diluted with a bit of saline, a bit of salt water, um, as well as a little bit of xylocaine, in other words, some painkiller or, or, or numbing agent within the actual mix itself. And the usual dilutions are one part to between eight to 11 parts, right, of water. Um, so when you have that, you have a solution which is injected. Now, how it works, like I said, in lower base solutions and lower dilutions, it can give you more volume. In higher um, solutions, in other words, higher dilutions, it's used usually with a cannula, usually in layer two, in other words, in the subcutaneous layer. And it's usually spread around your temple area as well as your pre area. What you should not do as an injector and you should not do as a patient is to believe all the BS hype about the skin tightening. Can it tighten skin? Yes. 
but it tightens skin with a little bit of volumization. The volumization is not as predictable compared to other injectables, but still that's why I do not use PLLA in areas like this area here. I will use it in your subzygomatic here in front of you only if you have hollowing and also in your temple area because we want that volumization and a little bit of tissue tightening. I say the word tightening because in the scheme of things, the tightening per se may be due to a little bit of volumization. That's something the company doesn't tell you. When you look at the release nowadays from Galderma, it'll tell you that the amount of collagen stimulated is unbelievable. It's actually fantastic and it stimulates really good collagen compared to scar tissue collagen. It does stimulate a little bit of collagen, but I think a lot of the actual effects are due to the volumization of your carrier agent as well. So you have to be very mindful where you place this. I use it, but I'm very careful where I place it. Does it actually tighten skin? That is the big question. Statistically, it can when you look under the microscope, certainly the uh, foreign body, which is in other words, your poly -L lactic acid, will cause some irritation that increases your, what's known as your multinucleate giant cells. In other words, it causes a foreign body reaction that stimulates your fibroblasts, in other words, the cells which produce collagen, and it can produce type one and type three collagen. Um, if you believe the marketing BS now, um, it can also modulate your adipocytes. In other words, it can modulate your fat cells because now the general trend which everyone buys into is your bioremodeling BS. In other words, your injectables that you use to stimulate your own immune system, whether it be to lay down new collagen, to differentiate new adipocytes, to differentiate keratinocytes. And hence, when you look at the marketing BS, not just of Galdemo, of every other um, uh, company that buys into bioremodelization is basically you have one agent, which is super old, maybe two decades old or even longer, that stimulates everything from your cells up the top through your fibroblasts to produce collagen, right down to your fat layer, and everything's nice and fuzzy. So I'm not against that. I just have to be very mindful where I actually place Sculptra. So to summarize, Sculptra, I do use it. I do like it. I like using it in the temple area. I like it in some patients in the subzygomatic area, in the cheek area, to produce some kind of volumization and some kind of tightening. I don't like to use it in the jawline area here. I don't think it's got enough properties to create more projection. I definitely don't use it on patients who are full around this area here at all, because I do believe it provides some volumization. For those patients here, you may need another injectable that's poly, um, sorry, that is polycaprolactone or PCL, preferably without CMC, so liquid PCL. That's another um, video altogether. So in summary, all of these injectables are very useful. You got to choose the right injectable for the right patient. Once again, non-promotional video. This is only educational. Hope you like it. Bye for now.